The U.S. military adopted the M68CCO at the turn of the 21st century in an effort to modernize their ground forces. By that time, the Comp M2 had been used for seven years with civilians and more specialized forces throughout the West. Over the next 24 years, it would prove itself to be one of the most robust and reliable optics on the planet. The M68 is a closed tube style red dot optic. By modern standards, it's large and heavy, weighing in just shy of eight ounces. The first generation was a 30mm tube that could be placed in any 30mm scope mount, and the following generations would have a specialized mounting interface. Aimpoint claims a 10,000 hour battery life with 11 brightness settings, 6 daylight settings, 4 night vision settings, and 1 super bright setting for the brightest of environments. In 2009, the US Army would select the Comp M4 to replace the aging M2 as its standard issue close combat optic. The early 2000s were a time of radical change for the firearms industry, especially in terms of optics. Gone were the days of infantry being issued iron sights and fixed stocks, at least in the first world. The US military wanted to make full use of its technological advantage and create next generation soldiers. Having red dots is one of the easiest ways to make troops shoot better quickly. The M68 was instantly popular among the ranks of the United States Armed Service. In popular media, the M68 has been prolific, but far less so than other optics at the time. The only major video games that I remember seeing the dot in were Battlefield 2 and the original Modern Warfare. And to be fair, COD 4 only had it in the campaign and is modeled very poorly. Despite being such a major step in red dot acceptance, it never saw the fame of the ACOG and the EOTech in the video game sphere. In movies, it is often seen in the background being used by US forces yet it rarely sees center stage. Because of its absence in the media landscape, I knew very little about this optic prior to enlisting in the US Air Force. Today, the M68 holds a special place in my heart and in the hearts of many, not only because of its cool factor, but also because of its handiness and reliability. Good afternoon, YouTube. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the Comp M2 or the M68 close quarters Close Combat Optic, right? CCO. I think this might be one of, if not the most underrated optics in the US today, probably worldwide. Uh, maybe they see more service in other places. So this is, this is one of my very favorite optics, right? I got this one at a gun show, dirt cheap. They actually don't make this anymore, right? This is the Comp M2. They make the, uh, the Aimpoint Pro. And it's basically the same thing. Um, but these are cooler because this is what we used in Afghanistan. This is what we used in Iraq. They're just a super cool optic. So I had never used these before 2020 or 2021. I got issued my first M68. It was the second generation. So it was a Comp M4, but it still had the battery pack on top, right? Um, the new Comp M4 has a battery pack on the bottom. A little bit different, a little bit different mounting software, but real similar optic overall. Um, and I loved it, right? I carried that thing in Alaska for about two years before I got issued a brand new M4A1. And the new M4A1 came with a brand new Comp M4, the newest Comp M4. Um, and it, it's fine. Um, down here, I also have an M4A1 with a Comp M4. Terrific optic. But I think these first gens are just underappreciated. So they come with this spacer. Um, I pulled the spacer out. So this would be a lower two-third on a normal M4. Um, and I run it on my, my AP-5 as a self-defense gun, right? This is what sits beside my bedside. If somebody breaks in at night, they're getting a flashlight and then they're, you know, this is just a fantastic close quarters optic. Uh, one of my favorite things about it is you can just unclick it, right? Pull it off. You can set this over here, come back with something else, throw it on there. Oh, I get bored of it on here. I come back. Um, and it's actually gonna hold at zero, right? So I popped it out. This is the standard operating procedure. I should be able to pop it back on here. Sometimes it's a little, little tricky, I'm on camera. So, you know, make fun of me. Twist it on there. And then you're gonna hear three clicks. And it is now returned to zero. Um, so this is super cool, right? When you have an M4 and you get handed a 249 and the M249 generally doesn't come with an optic, but it does have a rail. So you can throw one of these on there. 
It might not be zeroed for the 249, but in terms of being battlefield accurate out of a belt-fed machine gun, it is a lot handier than the iron sights. And then when you're done, you can throw that puppy right back on your M4. Um, I don't know why this never took off, right? Because if you played video games or watched movies throughout the 2000s, this right here, the EOTech 512, this is the optic you know. This is the war on terror optic for people who are not in the military, right? Including myself. Until I joined the military, I had no experience with this. No one runs these. Um, this is like the cool guy optic, right? This is like Battlefield 3. This is Black Ops 2. This just is what was cool. Same thing with the ACOG. If you played any video games throughout the 2000s, the ACOG and the EOTech 512 are like the cool guy optics. I don't know why. I don't know if EOTech paid Activision or something to put these in all of the Call of Duty games, right? Um, but yeah, for whatever reason, these were just non-existent from the media landscape, which I find really interesting. They're kind of large. They're kind of bulky. Um, on the modern space, I feel like there's probably better options, but just they're kind of prolific. Like you do see them at gun shows. You do see them around. The military had thousands, hundreds of thousands. I believe we purchased 100,000 of them in 2000 and another 700,000 of them in 2009, that being the Comp M4. So they are out there, right? I mean, they're out there uh, like ACOGs are out there. And I guess you don't see ACOGs like you used to. But like for a time, ACOGs and EOTechs were the go-to optic, or at least I thought they were cool. And a lot of other people thought they were cool, right? If you played Call of Duty, you thought they were cool. If you watched TV, you thought they were cool. Um, but this never really got there. And I think maybe it should have. Um, you have night vision settings out of the box, right? Um, this one has the paint worn off, so it doesn't have the little arrow, but you have 11 different settings on there, right? From Omega Bright, to Omega Dim, um, and I've shot these through nods, and the night vision settings actually work really well. You have a one, like a one to two year battery life, so I just leave this on one of the the dimmer daylight settings at all times. So if somebody breaks in, I don't have to turn it on; it's already on. Um, you replace the battery once a year, and you're chilling. Whereas you have 56 days continuous use on the EOTech, and every four to eight hours it turns off. I, when I turn it on, hit the little button that turns off after four hours. But it's like, you just leave this on, right? Especially if you're in country. Like, I see why we use these overseas. I see why we still use them, right? That's an insane amount of battery life. These are super durable. I mean, we give them to airmen and soldiers, right? I mean, they are like, you can't eat them. We give these to Marines. You can't chew through them. Um, you can drop them. I've seen these be dropped out of steak bed pickups. I've seen them be dropped out of second floor buildings. Um, I've seen people trip and fall and drop these on the ice and I've never, well, I can't say I've never seen one break, but it is hard to break this optic. Um, I think they're fantastic. I think they're underrated. And I think if you're watching this video, you should go out, pick one up and mess with it. You might love it. It's kind of hard to find these original aim points, um, but they're out there. Go find one. You might love it. All right, viewer. What do you think? Is the M68 awesome? Or is the 512 just a far better optic? Let me know in the comments. Leave a comment. Comment in your comments, even. Uh, it's good for the algorithm. Give me a like. If you didn't like it, give it a dislike. I want to know what you guys want to see, right? Uh, we've got big projects in the future. Big projects coming to Twitter, slash X, whatever you want to call it, right? Big things coming to Instagram. If you want to reach out to do a collab, if you want to reach out and be in a video, if you live in the South Georgia area, um... You know, my Instagram, C-O-R-T underscore uh, S-T-E-W, right? Of course, too. Um, look me up on Twitter, at Court Stewart. All my shit's in the bio. Look me up. Come be in a video. Um, thanks for watching. Please continue to watch. Continue to like, subscribe. Hit the bell notification. Be cool.